What's happening, Polite Society? I hope you're having a good week. Today, we're going to be responding to some comments made by J.D. Greer. So let's delve in. Hello, everyone. If you're here for the first time, welcome to my channel. I'm Alan. Before I begin, I'd just like to make a correction to a mistake I made in my previous video. In it, I had stated that Stephen Furtick never referred to John MacArthur by name in his book on Qualified. Actually, it was brought to my attention by someone in the comments section that Mr. Furtick did in fact mention Pastor John's name in the acknowledgement section at the end of Unqualified. So I just wanted to correct that error. Recently, Justin Peters uploaded a few videos in which he detailed some very troubling news involving J.D. Greer and Ed Litton. I posted links to those videos below. You should definitely check them out if you have time. I'm not going to touch on the plagiarism here. For that, you can check out Justin's content. In this video, I'd like to focus on a specific statement made by Mr. Greer. So to give you some context, in this same talk, Mr. Greer has already made an incredibly confusing statement. Homosexuality does not send you to hell. You know how I know that? Because heterosexuality does not send you to heaven. Both Justin and Pastor Jim Osmond have responded to that. You can see their commentaries in the videos posted below. Let's hone in on this next statement made by Mr. Greer. Jen Wilkin, who's one of our favorite Bible teachers here and who's actually leading our women's conference, she said, she said, we ought to whisper about what the Bible whispers about and we ought to shout about what it shouts about. And the Bible appears more to whisper when it comes to sexual sin compared to its shouts about materialism and religious pride. That's an amazing statement. That's like saying that God whispers about incest or God whispers about bestiality. I mean, uh, Yes, it's true that there are not a huge number of texts dealing with homosexual practice, uh, but it's sort of like saying, you know, I, I, in all the churches I've ever been to throughout my life, I've never heard an evangelical pastor give a sermon about why you shouldn't have sex with your mother or your sister. But I've never deduced from that that God whispers. <laughs> but the very notion that a pastor would even entertain the idea that the Bible and God obviously whispers about sexual sin, that is absolutely gobsmacking to me. It is. Gobsmacking is the perfect word for it. In that video, Justin provides some texts which easily refute Mr. Greer's assertion. Here's one of them. Colossians 3, 5 through 6. Therefore, consider the members of your earthly body as dead, to sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and greed, which is idolatry. Hmm, sexual immorality and greed listed in the exact same verse. So I guess the Bible whispers about sexual immorality, but it shouts about greed, even though they're in the, literally in the same breath. As these two great Bible teachers would attest to, the sacred writers do not in any way, shape, or form whisper about carnal and sensual sins. The forthcoming analysis is courtesy of Dr. Gagnon, who we saw. At the end of 1 Corinthians 5, Paul gives a vice list. Any of the following list of offenders don't associate with him because they will not inherit the kingdom. Notice once again, sexual immorality and greed together. Paul, when he does the same thing in Galatians 5, same kind of vice list. First three sets of vices, sensual offenses. Those who engage in pernea, sexual immorality. Those who engage in acarthasia, uncleanness or impurity. Those who engage in oslogeia, licentiousness, lack of sexual restraint with respect to the commandments of God. All of these are repeating themselves, looking at carnal sin from different angles. But notice, first three vices, sex. And when Paul finishes the vice list, he says, such people who engage in these sins will not inherit the kingdom of God. Is that whispering? In relation to same gender sensual sins in particular, in Leviticus 18.22, Moses states, You shall not sleep with the male as one sleeps with a female. It is an abomination. The Hebrew term translated as abomination here is toeva. It means something which is abhorrent or detestable to God. That's not whispering about carnal sins. And in Romans 1, Paul describes both woman-female and man-male intimate relations as being contrary to nature and those who engage in such things as receiving the due penalty of their errors. Once again, my friends, that is not whispering about sensual immorality. In summation, J.D. Greer, along with some other Southern Baptist leaders, have some teachings which are very, very troubling. 
all solid Bible-believing Christians need to be wary of this. And if I could just repeat some thoughts by Pastor Jim Osman. I think the best course of action for biblically sound Southern Baptists right now might be simply an exit from the SBC. So once again, let's be in prayer for our faithful Southern Baptist brothers and sisters. Let's pray that they continue to remain courageous and strong amidst this difficult time. And for those within the SBC who have actually fallen for the false gospel of the gay Christian movement, let's pray that the Spirit will work in their hearts so that they will embrace the true Jesus as he is freely offered in the gospel. And ladies and gents, if you want to share your own thoughts, be sure to do so in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like that video, please give it a thumbs up. If you like the content here, you can subscribe by clicking on the icon on the bottom right. Then you can hit the bell for notifications. I upload a new video every Wednesday and every Saturday. You can also follow me on Instagram. I posted a link below. Have an awesome rest of your week. And for my brothers and sisters in the Lord, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all always. I will see you all in the next video. God's blessings on your week.